Can you relate to this? You just filmed a video. It was 20 minutes long. And then you're doing the editing and then you find out, I cannot stand the way that this video turned out. That's exactly what happened to me. And so I'm going to film it again. And hello, my name is Sonia. And guess what? It's Friday. I'm doing a Friday Reads. A week ago today, we were stuck under 24 inches of snow. And now it's sunny, 67 degrees, beautiful. We do have some snow coming up you know, on and off in the forecast, but it's just wet, slushy snow, nothing like two feet. And so that's why I love living in Colorado. It's just beautiful. The spring is very unpredictable. And um, yeah, I, I just like it. First, the first thing I want to talk about is that Sean, the book maniac, and I talked about Don DeLillo and his masterpiece Underworld a few months ago, and this week Sean posted that video. So I'm going to leave a link in the show notes so that you can watch that if you're interested. Um, we had a really good discussion about the domestic personal novel versus the systems novel, which we read an article in Book Forum and then we were kind of riffing on the ideas in the article and then talked about whether or not Sean would like Underworld or any of DeLillo's work. And so you can watch that video to see what the answer, my answer was. That was really fun. Uh, another thing that I want to mention that I really enjoyed is that Gina has created a second channel and I'm going to link that below and Gina is just not talking about books. She's just doing other things and just like opened up the whole realm of possibility about what if every booktuber started a second channel, but you couldn't really or didn't want to talk about books and what would you say and what would you do? And so it's been fun imagining my second alter ego in a in a YouTube world. And anyway, I just really um, recommend that video if you just want something that is so relaxing and so fun to watch. Okay, I'm gonna talk about the books now. And I'm just gonna do kind of a off the top of my head impressions, not really going into an in-depth review of the books that I've read, but just kind of what I felt and if I'd recommend it or not. And the first book I want to talk about is John Banville's Snow. This is a murder mystery detective novel that is set in Ireland in the 1950s. Okay, so what you've got is this Protestant 35-year-old de detective who is a loner, and his name is Sinjin um, Strafford. Not Stafford, as people mispronounce it all the time, but he has to constantly remind him that it's Strafford with an R, not Stafford. And that gets on his nerves. And it's just these small pilings on of annoyances uh, in his life as he's trying to solve a crime of a Catholic priest who has been castrated and left for dead in a small village in a, um, a manor that is owned by other Protestants, but they've befriended this Catholic priest and he's dropped in and he is friendly with the family. And as you get to know all the characters in this book, you see this incredible animosity that every character has for every other character who is not exactly like them. So the Catholics and the Protestants really don't like each other and don't aren't afraid to show it. Um, it's a very dark and antagonistic, misanthropic novel, but I really enjoyed the writing. Um, it was pretty easy to guess who the killer was. And also the treatment of the women characters um, was questionable because they were all either crazy or um, lascivious or middle-aged and therefore just functionary, not human beings. So that part of it was, was questionable. But I did like the way that Banville was able to create this incredibly claustrophobic, very cold, frigid, miserable and suffering torturous Christmas as he's trying to solve this crime. So would I recommend it? I would with reservations. The next book I want to talk about is The Covenant of Water by Abraham Verghese. And this is a book that is a blockbuster seller, um, probably very popular with book clubs. Uh, and it's set in India in a Christian community of Indian people. And the premise is essentially that all the men in this particular branch of family that of Christians are not able to swim. And this is for, mostly for men. And every generation has a man who drowns because of 
what they considered to be like a curse. They didn't understand that it was medical and the mystery of what happened to these men. So what I liked about it is that it was very epic in scope. It covers decades and decades of family and um, the kind of showing what happened when the British were forced to leave India and partition happened. So that was interesting, the history of these people and the politics of these people. But what was missing for me in this novel is that I didn't really feel like the characters were written in depth. I mean, yes, they're present for decades, but there's no interiority, really. It's not about an analysis of a psyche or, you know, even the dialogue itself is very perfunctory and it just is there to kind of convey plot and not so much feelings. And so I felt like it was missing any kind of psychological depth. I've heard it said that this is more a fable than a realistic story, narrative, re realistic fiction. And I can see that. And it was also a bit of a soap opera and very melodramatic. And the plot didn't really seem like it could be credible. So, I, well, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that the plot wasn't credible. It was very compulsive. Like, I did want to know what was going to happen to the family and to the other characters in the book. But I also felt like it was at arm's length for me. And I didn't, I never once cried at a tragedy. I just didn't feel, I, the emotion wasn't there for me. Um, what it did spark for me is that I wanted to read A Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth because from what I remember, from what I read in 1999, there was just a lot more culture and um, it was just more interesting than what I read in The Covenant of Water. Next, I read Sons and Daughters of Ease and Plenty by Ramona Asabel. And this is a short novel and it's it's got a lot of um, depth in character depth and, and it's about a married couple. They have three children. They are very wealthy. They just, at the beginning of the novel, they're just coming home from vacation and, and just, they've lived a summer of privilege. And when they come home, they find out that the, the wife, whose name is Fern, her family had the money that was funding their life. And the money has run out from her family. So they don't have any money from that source anymore. And they're going to have to figure out what to do with their lives from that point forward. And it is such that Edgar, the husband, could go work for his family at an oil company and take over the oil company and they would be wealthy. Or he could continue struggling as a novelist and they would have to figure out how to make money. This is in the early 1980s and they've been married for a while and their, their child is like 10 or 11 and they have twin boys. So this is the crisis point in their lives. They're, they don't know what they're going to do. Real, you, they realize that their marriage has a crack in it and they need to figure out where they go from there. And each person wants to go off on their own and try and figure out their lives. And in while they do this, they there's a misunderstanding and they end up neglecting their children. And so their children are just left to their own devices for a little bit. So. I don't want to say any any more about that because the joys of this novel are the way that it, it questions capitalism, it questions the American mythology of exceptionalism and how people who are extremely wealthy got wealthy. And it turns out, of course, not a surprise that, you know, they made their money from enslavement and and free labor and and backdoor deals and helping each other out and the maintaining the status quo at the expense of other people. And also the Vietnam War ha plays a big role in this narrative too. So it's questioning everything that, you know, we are taught about America and its um, inception and history and, and how important maintaining status and class is. So I thought it was really strong. I enjoyed it a lot. And I'm anxious to see what my book club people fellow book club members felt about it. I finished the Heaven and Earth grocery store. I listened to the audiobook and it was it was marvelous. And I know I've talked about this before and so many people on BookTube have already talked about this really great story about community um, in the 1930s in Potsdam, Potsdam, Pennsylvania, where 
it started out as a Jewish community and then African Americans started moving in. And so the Jewish people started moving out. Some stayed though, and they created this network of helping each other through really hard times. And yes, there's a very, there's a mystery, but it's really not at all about the mystery. It's about the way that these people come together in a crisis and help each other out. You get to know a huge cast of characters. So there are a lot of characters and it kind of feels like, you know, every chapter adds more characters, but I thought that was the charm of it. I know some people didn't like that because they felt it was too unwieldy, but I liked it. I, I just kind of opened myself up to whatever he wanted to tell me about and just went with it. So uh, he is a remarkable writer and the audiobook was remarkable as well. I really enjoyed that so much. I also finished Best American Short Stories of 2023. I haven't talked about the last two stories with my buddy reader, Teresa, but it was definitely a mixed bag anthology. I think that there were about eight really strong stories out of 20, and the rest of the stories, to me, some were at the MFA workshopping level, I felt. I did not understand how these could have been selected as best American short stories, honestly, some of them. Uh, but the the eight that I really liked were incredibly strong, including one called Annunciation by Lauren Groff. That was really strong um, and, and others. So I would say it's very hit or miss and probably one of the weaker editions of the best American short stories series that I have read. And the last book I'd like to talk about is uh, The Frozen River by Ariel Lahan. This is historical fiction set in the 1780s about the historical midwife Martha Ballard. I didn't realize when I read this that this was based on a true character. So I felt kind of dumb when I got to book club and that's what I found out. But it's, ooh, how long has that been showing? Ooh. But uh, I really liked the pacing. I liked the way it was written. I felt it was really strong. My one thing that I didn't like about it is in the Kindle version, all of Martha Ballard's journal entries were in a an almost unreadable italic font on the Kindle. So, and, you know, normally on a Kindle, you can change the font. But this was like, I really had to concentrate on what is this saying? Um, and I wish that hadn't been done. I think it could have just been handled as an indented quote just set in Roman. That's my one quibble about reading that book. But all in all, I really like the story. Um, it was a little bit wild and unbelievable at the end, but I was okay. I just rolled with it. And I learned a lot about that time period and about birthing practices of the time and the way that the judicial system was set up at the time with like circuit courts because they couldn't, you know, have judges in every town and 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 in this case a local judge was one of the ones who was accused of a very horrific crime and so just how how the laws were decided and how important written documentation was and um yeah it was just really interesting so it was just full of color and historical detail that i felt was necessary to learn something about the time period okay what am I reading now? I'm reading a memoir by Katie Couric called Going There, and this is an accounting of how she became a, a world-famous journalist. Uh, I don't think the writing is particularly remarkable. It's very matter-of-fact and, you know, missing a huge amount of detail. It's just, it's moving very quickly. But she does tell some interesting, funny anecdotes about the people that she worked with coming up through CNN and getting recruited to different networks. And, you know, I like the dirt sometimes. And uh, I've been watching Katie Couric for, you know, as long as she's been broadcasting. And so it's, it's interesting to a point. And would I recommend it? I'm not sure. But if you really like Katie Couric, you might. And the other thing I have picked up is Hilary Mantel's A Change of Climate. This is a story that is about, I think, I don't know if they were missionaries or if they were just functionaries of the British government, but they lived in South Africa, this couple with their children. And then 
Um, then they moved back home to England. And so I'm only two chapters in. I don't really know what the premise is because I didn't read the, the blurb, but I know a secret from the past is coming, going to come forward and it's going to wreak havoc on the marriage of this couple. So I'm up for that. You know, I really love the way Hilary Mantel writes and she can capture the all of the complexities of people and their psychologies and their communications. And so... So I think it's going to be strong. It's only in 300 and some pages, so it's not a really long book. And what will I read from there? I'm just not sure. I have two buddy reads and two book club books for April that I need to read. And I have a little project for people April in mind, but I don't know. I don't know exactly how that's going to work or if I will be able to pull it off. So I will let you know. Thank you so much for watching. If you got all the way to the end, please let me know in the comments how you are, what you're reading, or just a random thought. What did you have for dinner last night? I don't know. That's one of my main conundrums of life is figuring out what to have for dinner. So thank you for watching and I will see you very soon. Bye.